Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you had a good Christmas. Today is December 26th, and I thought I'd do something a little different here. I might do this on a regular kind of monthly basis, but over the past month, I sent myself every fascinating piece of data, graph, map I came across. Then I simply put it all together. I kind of organized it to the best of my ability. And today I want to present it. And it should be a fun, fascinating video. And if you guys do enjoy this, let me know by leaving a like, subscribing, and let's do this. So this first one here might be my favorite. So this is highlighting the top Google trends all throughout the year. And we have data for 2021 and 2022. And this is so fascinating. It's acting as a kind of time capsule. So we can see that right in the beginning of the year for 2021, we had the Capitol riots. We have GME, that whole GameStop debacle and Wall Street bets that spiked in the early half of 2021. The next one here is vaccines. And this one's fascinating because it was essentially prevalent in Google search for most of the year. The Suez, this is the uh, the large container ship that blocked the Suez for like two weeks. So, I mean, this data just comes together and perfectly encapsulates what the year was about. America pulling out of Afghanistan happened at the end of 21, Hurricane Ida around the same time, and Squid Game. And then for 2022, we had a huge COVID spike right in the beginning of the year. This of course is when the Ukraine war began. Queen Elizabeth's death, the Iranian protest, Hurricane Ian, and nuclear fusion breakthrough. Now this next map highlights the most visited website in each country. And when I first came across this map, I just looked at it for a long period of time. So some key takeaways here is Reddit is actually the number one website in Canada. That's shocking. For the US, the top website is Amazon e-commerce. For Germany, Wikipedia is the number one most visited site. And Switzerland also shares Wikipedia as the number one website. In the UK, they have the BBC, that's to be expected. And I noticed here in China, they have no data. The government completely censored all of it. Okay, now the next kind of grouping I have here is weird perspectives. So this line you see going across Europe is the length of the US-Mexico border overlaid on a European scale. And I gotta say, even for me, this is a lot bigger than I originally thought. It goes all the way from Portugal to almost Minsk. And if you go to the truesizeof.com, this is an exact overlay of Mexico over the European continent. And it perfectly goes from Paris to the Black Sea. This is another extremely weird perspective I came across and I had to share it with you guys. So from Darwin, aka the north of Australia, to the south of Australia, that is a distance of 3,140 kilometers, which is actually ever so slightly larger than the distance from South Australia to Antarctica. I just assumed that the distance between Australia and Antarctica was a lot more than the height of the continent itself. Okay, now this map I found very fascinating. So down here is the ledger, and essentially it's highlighting countries that have extreme temperatures. So countries in red have recorded temperatures above 48 degrees Celsius. Countries in blue recorded temperatures below negative 48 degrees Celsius. And countries in black recorded both temperature extremes. So as you would expect, there is a band kind of in this subtropical zone where we have high temperatures. But surprisingly, there is another distinct band here between the tropics and the Arctic where we have both temperature extremes. Although a question I have here is where in Canada do they record a temperature of over 48 degrees Celsius? Okay, now this map shows the richest countries in the world with a GDP per capita above 50,000. So here we have most of Western Europe, minus the Iberian Peninsula, Scandinavia, North America. I see Israel, Saudi Arabia, New Zealand, Australia, and we also have Taiwan, South Korea, Hong Kong, Singapore, and is there another spot right here? And finally, the last map I have here is kind of uh, interesting and sad. This shows what year slavery was abolished, and it's a very granular map. And there's a little bit of a, of a index right here. So immediately you can see the divide in the American Civil War right here. So most of the Union abolished slavery in the early 1800s, 
and the South, 1865. Although we do have select areas in New England and the Great Lakes region where they abolished slavery back in 1787. South America has a pretty similar time frame here, but the real leaders here in terms of being the first to abolish slavery is the European continent. I see a lot of blue here, which indicates years between 1200 and 1500. It looks like the last major European power to abolish slavery was Spain in 1837. But the sad part of the map is right here through the Middle East, China, and Africa. A lot of people don't realize how late slavery persisted in a lot of these underdeveloped areas. So in a lot of the former British colonies, slavery was still a thing into the early 1900s. And in some spots in the Middle East, Western Africa, it wasn't until 1960 or 1980. So those are some random maps I came across over the past month. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to continue, let me know by leaving a like, subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.